Philip Case. I'm an arable reporter at Farmers Weekly. I'm here today to visit farmer Jonathan Fenwick in the Lincolnshire village of Bealsby. Jonathan, tell me about your farm. Well, William, my son and I farm here with uh, four other chaps with two and a half thousand acres on two sites mm -hmm. of our own, all arable. Um, mixture of spring crop winter crops and we are covering approximately 5,000 acres per annum now as contractors um, offering services from whole farm contracting to any individual jobs uh, mainly cultivation and combining right. um, we have a fairly large corporate shoot um, which we shoot 40 days a season we run 17 arctics on general haulage uh, and basically everything else is just arable. How are you coping as an arable farmer in these difficult economic times? Well, everything's a challenge at the minute. Uh, input costs are rocketing um, mm. beyond belief, mainly because of exchange rates. Uh, and our commodity prices, unfortunately, are under great pressure. It mm. doesn't let you get up in the morning with a great feeling, knowing that you're drilling spring barley, not to make any money, but it is a dilemma as to know what crops to grow that will return a margin. Um, the challenge is just to do everything as efficiently and uh, as cost effectively as possible. And if that means covering greater areas, doing more to reduce the cost per acre of our equipment, then that's what we do. We've got a big operation here. How do you manage everything with such a small workforce? Well, I've got a very dedicated team. Fortunately, my son has joined me from uh, Harper Adams and he's here full time. We've got uh, all the other operators know their jobs, they have specific jobs, they're very good at it. Um, we have a good two-way radio system so we can all keep in contact all the time with uh, a lot less cost than mobile phones and it's just a case of everybody is prepared to put in long hours when the work's there um, and they're dedicated to their job. Uh, we have a very good mechanic that, that keeps everything maintained and up to speed. So it just works as one unit. We work together. Um, as I say, the customers that I have on the contracting side, we all work in together so th there's no argument about who is on whose farm at which time. And it's just get on with the jobs when they're there to do. The last five years or so, you've decided to take up more contracting. Tell me about why you came to that decision and how it's going. Well. With the cost of equipment nowadays and the need for efficiency, timeliness is everything. Farming is always a, a challenge against uh, time and weather. Mm. And by branching out into doing other people's work, it means that those other farmers can have bigger kit, better kit, that can get their crops in when they want them and get them combined when they want them, combined dry. It means we can run more efficiently, they can run more efficiently, and we can, uh, we can justify the investment in the equipment. That's the main reason to expand that. And also, it's a case of making, making ends meet. You've branched out into other areas outside of farming, and, and one of them is, um, is haulage. Yeah, um, the farm since the 1950s always had a farm lorry and at 21 I took my class one mm. and we were growing a lot of vegetables at the time needed more lorries for seasonal activities and it expanded and expanded and we're now running 17 Arctics uh, nationwide mainly hauling fertilizer and other agricultural products but general haulage um, we're very lucky to be uh, involved in one or two exciting projects as well like uh, Carting the turf to a lot of these football grounds, Wembley, the Millennium right. Stadium, places like that, which is a bit of excitement for the drivers, but it takes a lot of logistical management as well. Unfortunately, it's uh, struggling with the high cost of fuel mm. and the economic downturn, so it's challenging as well. But uh, when you believe that every farm, everything comes off or goes onto the farm via a lorry, so there will always be need for them. Jonathan, a lot of your machinery is John Deere. Um, why is that? The dealer backup that we get round here is very good from John Deere. Um, 
I've had a long history of association with John Deere. I don't change them that often. I believe a tractor should last for 10,000 hours. Um, we rebuilt an engine last year for one for ourselves. You know, we're quite happy to do that sooner than just changing them when the ashtray is full. So we're still predominantly a plough based system. Uh, we like Cavernland ploughs, we run two of them. Uh, they, the wearing points, we're on very abrasive soils here uh, with a high flint and chalk content. So we get we get good performance out of them, the basic frames are good. And with this, which is, as you can see, it's a Simba uh, flatliner cultivator, subsoiler, we've put a different uh, ring roll on the back, we've put an old KRM drill unit on the top, and the 11 inch um, row widths, which is perfect for beans, through solid coulters, so we know exactly what depth they're going in and we can cover 40 to 50 acres a day behind one of the crawlers with this and it works very well. So it's certainly saved an awful lot of money right. in uh, establishing beans. Um, this is something that you're keen to develop further this year? And yes promise? it is, uh, once again William is very keen on shooting and right. uh, uh, we, we love our shooting, we enjoy it, we meet a lot of people, uh, very good business contacts. Well I mean this is uh, winter malting barley which a lot of people haven't bothered to grow this year because the price of malting barley being so poor. Right. But there's a big demand for malting barley straw. Um, I've put some of it into a pool with Frontier to see if we can achieve a return on it. Right. And uh, it gives us the spread of crops so we can cope with the pressure of contracting because this can be off in good time, it's the first crop to harvest. Right. And so it gives us a spread for, that suits everybody. And so that's why I've maintained it in the rotation. Fascinating. What's your particular variety? Is this is Flagon, okay. which is, you know, it's a, a well-respected malting barley. Well, this, this has just had a, a herbicide in the autumn. And within the next uh, couple of weeks, we will start our program. And we use a very high input system. Right. I've got a very good agronomist and who regularly inspects the crops and sends us recommendations with high input and high output and you know go right. for maximum yield at all times. Yes. Um, obviously winter barley you've got to be careful where you grow it so because you know we are fortunate most of the farm doesn't have a big black ash problem so because mm. uh, winter barley obviously there's no control. Jonathan do you think that diversification is a distraction for you? Being diversified into a lot of other things has made me try and keep the farming simple mm. even though it's uh, big in scale in acreage right. it's relatively simple mm. having taken things out like potatoes and right. sugar beet which were very intensive um, and also stock mm. um, we can cover the bigger acreages but it is relatively straightforward i see okay is there anything that you've diversified into that you would actually consider losing though oh yes yeah, certainly there is um, the haulage side is under immense pressure, a lot down due to the economic downturn, but the cost of fuel and right. over-regulation, mm. uh, it has to pay its way. Uh, every bit of diversification, even down to the shooting, if you know if we can't uh, make a return from it, there's no point in doing it. I might as well go shooting elsewhere myself and free up the days. The contracting, while it's there and while it uh, we can maintain our equipment as long as we're not just wearing our equipment out quicker by doing other people's, um, we'll keep going. But everything has to stand upon its own, right? not just en masse. Or else you wouldn't do it. Otherwise I, I wouldn't do it. Right. Um, and so I've probably answered my own question that, you know, we have to look at everything in its own right. Right.